from Dodger Stadium. The show presents the National League Division Series. It's the San Diego Padres taking on the Los Angeles Dodgers. Joined by my partner Chris Singleton, I'm John Shomby. Postseason baseball, Singy, it's always great to see and be a part of. Oh, Boog, you just never know what's in store when it comes to postseason baseball. You do know you're going to see some amazing pitching, guys coming out of the bullpen throwing 100, some incredible defensive plays, some big knocks, and maybe a mistake or two that'll live on forever. All I do know is I'm pumped up for this one. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. So just about set now, and today's starting pitcher, Michael Kopech. Chris, what should we keep an eye on here with him? They're going to start this one with the opener because of the matchups, very favorable. I think we're going to see him empty the tank with really good fastball velocity to try to retire these first three hitters. Luis Arise stands in. The first baseman, Luis Arise. Right-hander kicks deals. And that one is lifted in the air. And that'll fall for a base hit. Man aboard on the leadoff single. Now it's Fernando Tatis Jr. And the pitch. That misses the zone. And that's ball two. Nobody out. Runner at first. Hit on the ground. Might be two. Over to Edmund. Out. To Muncie. That's two. For me, that's one of the toughest double plays to turn on the infield. The first baseman has to get inside, create a throwing lane to hit that middle infielder to start the double play, and then from there, completing it back to first. Really good job all the way around. Now batting Jerks and Profar. Pace and misses. It's a strikeout. It's the Padres nothing. Dodgers coming up. This is the National League Division Series on the show. Back here in L.A. And our starting pitcher here today, Dylan Cease. Well, the big thing is that the way he holds his curveball, it's more of a knuckle curve. And because of that, it's less predictable in terms of the break for the hitter. That makes it that much harder to hit this guy. Bottom of the first. And now the DH, Andy Pajas. The pitch. And that one fouled off. Foul ball still one and two count. The wind and the pitch. And the one two misses to even the count. The wind to kick the pitch. And that one lifted in the air center field. And that'll fall for a base hit. So a man on base to start the inning. Hitting is really easy for some guys. One thing that I can see already, his bat stays in the zone on plane for an extended period of time. And guys like that, they have a high contact rate and they have more barrels because of that bat being on plane. And even when you don't get it great, it's still hit hard enough to dunk something in like that in front of the center fielder. Now it's Mookie Betts. Pajes gets his lead at first with nobody out. Run around the goal. And a foul ball. Mm -hmm. 
And he deals. And a swing and a miss. And there's one down. Here's Teoscar Hernandez. Righty delivers. Swing and a tapper that rolls foul. Man at first, one away. He's looking very comfortable out of the stretch after giving up the leadoff single. Back-to-back -back strikeouts, so they haven't been able to move that runner up, get him into scoring position, and try to have a better chance of scoring. I tell you, good job so far on the mound. He just needs one more out. Here's Max Muncy, that funky Muncy. Next pitch in for a strike, and the count's even at two. Well, with this many pitches thrown here in this first inning, I mean, you're giving the other team a really good look. He's going to have to find a way to get some weak contact, maybe a swing and miss, get into that dugout, and hit the reset button. To the right side. He takes it himself to the bag, and that'll do it. One left for L.A. We played an inning. No score. Back here at Chavez Ravine. New inning getting started. Here's the cleanup hitter for the Padres, Manny Machado. When you talk about elite defensive third baseman, this guy is at the top of the list. Throws across the diamond. One out in the second. Definitely not a comfortable play to make down there at third when it's ripped at you like that. Pretty impressive stop, though. He kind of stabbed at it, got off, completed the play. You know, some guys are just waving at that one as it goes by to the outfield. Jackson Merrill, the next up for the Padres. The pitch. That one inside, and it's two and one. The wind of the pitch. Oh, he doesn't get the call. And that's ball three. James Kingsley working the plate. Kingsley's pretty well respected around the league. Yeah, when you talk to players, I think consistently he is one of the guys you hear compliments about. Players appreciate the job he does back there. Yeah, and that's kind of all you can ask for, really, just to... Oh, this one high and deep. Way back there. And gone. His second homer this series, and the Padres take the lead. It's 1-0. Knew what pitch he wanted to hit, spit on some other pitches in this at bat, was very patient, and it paid off. So one out, nobody on. It's Xander Bogarts now. The 1-1 one -one is cut on and missed to the pitch one upstairs. Two strike. One out, base is empty, and a run in here in game six. Legends really are cemented in the postseason. You think of David Ortiz heroics for the Red Sox, Derek Jeter as Mr. November, or Randy Johnson in the 2001 World Series, just to name a few. In the air, center field. Sizing this one up. He makes the grab. That's out number two. Well, on that idea of postseason reputations, Boog, got to mention players like Carlton Fisk, Reggie Jackson, and Madison Bumgarner. We were doing that game. Those guys really shine in the toughest moments. Two outs. 
So a foul ball makes it one and two. Here comes a pitch. And a swing and a miss. Down on strikes. That's the third out. But the Padres draw first blood here on the solo shot. It's now 1-0. You're watching the National League Division Series on the show. Bottom of the second, and here's the catcher, Will Smith. The catcher, Will Smith. That one back up the middle, and it gets through. So a runner aboard to start the inning. And here comes Tommy Edmond. The two strikes may see some movement over there at first base, trying to stay out of the double play right here. Down the line. And a foul ball. And a pitch. Got him looking for the strikeout. Called strike three and a fastball up in the zone. And now it's Gavin Lux. And here it comes. Swing and a pop-up. Bogarts settles underneath it. They got it for out number two. Batting it. The third baseman, Kike Hernandez. Here's Kike Hernandez. And that's in for a strike. And another ball. Spoils that one, and it remains two and two. The Padres leading by a run, bottom half of inning number two. Up and in, and a full count now. Great RBI spot here, just got to stay focused on the pitch. The runner will be in motion, so something in the gap should definitely score it. Now fly ball to right center. Sizes this one up. Corrals it. And that's the inning. So the Dodgers leave one, still behind by a count of one to nothing. Back here at Dodger Stadium, all set for the start of the inning. And now Jake Cronenworth. And now two and two. <laughs> Bounce to third. Zips it to first. One up, one down. Kyle Higashioka, the next up for the Padres. All sliders so far in this at bat to get ahead in the count and clearly shows there was a game plan in mind for how to attack him in the box. Slider misses outside. One out, base is empty. Swing and a miss. The high heat too much on that one. Well, you talk about a pitch coming in on a frozen rope. The challenges of catching up to 100 miles an hour or a ball is just tremendous you see it at least you think you do but by the time you swing it's in the catcher's mitt the kick the three two got him Padres go down one two three nothing doing there for the Friars 
but they're on top one nothing. And welcome back to the ballpark as we go to the last of the third. Now it's going to be Chris Taylor. And that one cutting but missing down low. There's a swing and a drive. And an automatic double as it hops the fence. The automatic double kind of feels like enjoying cruise control in your car, Boog. You don't need to keep the pedal down as you cruise into second base. Just no worries in the world. You know what? He put a really good swing on that one. So the lineup flips over. Andy Pajes, the next to hit. A little out front there as he swings through it. As a pitcher, you know the runner on second is ready to push things with his speed. A base hit's probably going to be a big run, so you really have to execute on the mound. Taylor at second with nobody out. Hit hard. Should be extra bases. Runner around third on his way to the plate. He'll score and then tie it. It's 1-1. One, one. Safely into second. He's got a double. Wasting no time. He's two for two now on the night. And just a triple and home run away from the cycle. Seriously, we're starting with this already. Runner in scoring position. No outs. Now the number two hitter, Mookie Betts. That one missed. You know, these Dodgers showing great discipline at the plate, and patience definitely seems to be the name of their game in this one. He's only given up one run, but the starter's pitch count is starting to get up there, and that might be the best news yet for this offense. That one fouled off. You know, sometimes all it takes is getting to the next arm before an offense does any damage, and that might be the case today. Man, it's second. Tried to got. check his swing there. Now it appealed to first. He did not go around. Turns and fires to Betts. And there's ball four. And now Teoscar Hernandez. Singing, you can't ask for anything more. This guy checks all the boxes offensively. He is the ultimate professional, and it doesn't just start at game time. It starts in the afternoon the way he prepares and gets Double steal. Right side. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. One away. The batter. The first baseman. Matt Muncy. Two on, one out. And here's the first baseman, Max Muncy. Two on, one out. The last thing he wants is to hit the ball on the ground, but I wouldn't expect many pitches up in the zone. They'll be pitching for a double play in this spot. And another ball. And now the count filled up three and two. Will Smith up next. Payoff pitch. Got him swinging. Two out. It's a good breaking ball there, just off the corner where you can't really do much damage, but it's close enough to where you've got to protect, and he just couldn't find a way to fight it off. So first and second with two outs. And now the catcher comes up to him. Will Smith. That's in there. And the count is one and two. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. You can see he was trying to stay back long enough to handle the off-speed pitch, but just a little tardy on the fastball. Up the middle. Bogarts handles the chance. They get the force. That ends the inning, 
And they limit the damage. Dodgers with a run scoring double. All even now at 1-1. to the fourth so here's the Padres DH Fernando Tatis Jr. the wind of the pitch that misses the zone and it's two and one you know these Padres do a great job Boog of just waiting for the right pitch to come their way and I'm seeing very patient at bats out of him he's only given up one run but the starters pitch count is starting to get up there and that might be the best news yet for this offense Hits and misses. It's a strikeout. Very frustrating right there as a speedy potential base runner when with two strikes you just struggle to put the ball in play. You don't even have to get a hit at that point. You can help your team just by reaching on an error. But some way you got to find a way to shorten up the swing and put the ball in play next time. Profar climbs in on that left side. You know, sometimes all it takes is getting to the next arm before an offense does any damage, and that might be the case today. And a swing and a miss. Two away. Really love the pitch sequence right there. I'm telling you what, pitcher and catcher on the same page right now. Here's Manny Machado now. Two down, nobody on. Swings through that. One ball, two strikes. Two outs. And down on strikes. And a nice inning of work there as he sets him down. One, two, three. Padres go down quietly. Score remains tied. One, one. And we're back. Tommy Edmond at the plate. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond, and this guy is at the top of the list. That misses the zone, and it's two and two. Yeah, we go beyond just the you know fielding percentage and you know what it looks like, but the ability to have a range and you know, close holes that you know are normally there against an average defender. But this guy is special, and you can see it in his first step quickness. And a pitch. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Boog, and the one thing about that is speed never goes in a slump. And defense shouldn't either. Hitting-wise, you can struggle. You can lose your mechanics. But the thing that you can do consistently every single game is play great defense if you're talented in that way. And this is what this guy does. 3-2. Now drive, base hit. He saw a lot of pitches in that at bat and found a way to win the battle. So up next, Gavin Lux. And that's off the inside edge. Ball three. for strike two. It's a hitter. You don't know what to expect here in the 3-2. If he'll throw a breaking ball 3-1, he'll do it again 3-2. a pitch that slider from an opposite handed pitcher that you usually see very well but for some reason he didn't pick it up and it just kind of got into the strike zone late gave up on it a little bit early here's Kike Hernandez the 1-1 one -one. foul ball there Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And there's two away. 
Boog gets talked about a lot, but a good high fastball in a two-strike situation, it's just become such a problem for hitters in more recent years. But with all of the emphasis by pitchers on developing that spin rate, having a good grip on the baseball, those high fastballs, they kind of look like to the hitter that they're rising, even though they're not, but they're not decreasing in velocity and spin rate. So very difficult to get the barrel on it. Edmund off of first with two away. Check on the runner. Edmund dives back in safely. The 1 1. Runner on the go. Pitch in for a strike. Safe and second with a stolen base. Well, he picked over once just before the pitch to check on him, but that didn't seem to slow up his jump on the pitch at all. I think that guy's been studying some video. Awesome job to be prepared. Got the timing down, and he gets into scoring position. All tied up. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. Ground ball right side. And he can't come up with it. And he's going to make it to first. And we'll see how they score. to the top of the Dodgers order and next is the designated hitter Andy Pajas in the air to left center Profar has a beat on it he's got it that is the inning Dodgers strand a couple still tied 1-1 Back here in L.A., we go to the top of the fifth. Stepping in for San Diego, Jackson Merrill. And another ball. You know, these Padres, as this game goes on, have to be more disciplined at the plate. They've been chasing pitches outside the zone all game, and it's led to some frustrating moments. They've been fooled quite a bit today. And the right-hander deals. That one ripped, but foul. And the pitch. That I missed by a lot. Full count now. Got him swinging. He's locked in at the plate when he's using the whole field. He was out in front there. Just needs to let the ball travel a little more, and his timing will be back on track. Good pitch for the strikeout. Now here's Xander Bogarts now. One down, base is empty. Line drive, base hit. Showed some really nice patience in that at bat. Worked himself into a good count. Nice job of driving that pitch the other way on a line. You know, hitters, they take so many reps in the cages working on going to the opposite field, and it doesn't always translate into the game, but right there it did, and he did it perfectly. Go ahead, run on base. Next to hit, David Peralta. Got him. Two down. Ball really went aggressive in with that slider. Good two-strike pitch right there. At worst-case scenario, it's weak contact in play. Exactly where he and the catcher wanted it. Now here's Jake Cronenworth. Two outs. Swing and a miss. Handcuffed him with that slider. Third out. Padres leave one. Score remains deadlocked at one. Back now to start the bottom of the fifth and taking over on the mound, Martin Perez. Still pretty early in the ballgame, so this bullpen has some work ahead of them. 
Best case scenario might be if he can come in here and get several quick outs, kind of bridge the gap that starter left for him. Here's Mookie now singing. He's a guy that covers both sides of the plate about as well as anyone in the sport. How difficult is that to do? I'll just look at the back of my bubblegum card. You'll see how hard it is. These guys are great, man. They have the ability to look out there, but also to be able to turn on the inside pitch. Those that can really sharpen things on the outer half, those are the ones that become elite. Just pulled off of it a little bit right there. That front shoulder coming open instead of staying closed. If he does that, he's going to be able to go up the middle the other way with some authority instead of a fly out to left. The pitch. And another ball. Action in the pen down there. Wandy Peralta getting loose out there. Just missed. Base is empty one away. Last half of inning number five. Got the bat going too soon. It's strike two. Granted. looking and there are two outs and now it's Max Muncy he's not going to get cheated up there no he's not he's looking to do damage with every swing he takes Garrett Richards a guy who was originally a first round pick of the Angels out of the University of Oklahoma Swing and a miss. Got him to go up the ladder for the K. Nothing doing for the Dodgers here. We played five full. Tied at one aside. We're back, and they make a change to start the sixth. The new pitcher, Shohei Otani. Now looking for the Dodgers. Number 17. Shohei Otani. So digging in now for San Diego, Kyle Higashioka. Out to short, and it finds its way through for a hit. So now back to the top of the order. Now He kind of rolled over on this pitch a little bit, but he got enough behind it to shoot it through for a knock, and you'll take that anytime you can get him to find a hole. Luis Arias, the next up for the Padres. Right-handed reliever. Run around the move. Swing and a miss. For the second tag. Out at second. Not a fast runner on the base pass, so this kind of looks like it was a hit-and-run call from the dugout. Got to make contact some way or somehow because that guy's not going to be able to steal second base and be safe. Tied up, and we're the top half of the sixth. Hey. Got him! That's out number two. And the batter will be Fernando Tatis Jr. Well, with both starters out of this ball game, it now becomes a battle of the bullpens and just seeing which manager can match up better and who's able to get to the finish line. Activity in the bullpen for the Dodgers. Ryan Brazier looks to be getting ready for manager Dave Roberts. Trying him. Getting cranked up as well. Two out spaces empty. Got it by him for the K. One hit in the inning, but nothing more than that. We go to the bottom half of inning number six. And the five, six, seven slots do up. All tied, 1-1. One, one. here at Chavez Ravine bottom of the sixth inning now here is Will Smith Aye. strike two one ball two strikes kick 
Sandios. Got him swinging on the curveball. Looks like he's picked up right where he left off. Well, I don't think there's a hitter alive that hasn't at some point succumbed to that pitch right there. It just looks like it's in the zone the entire way, and then the top spin and gravity take over in the blink of an eye, and it's just such a tough pitch to lay off of. Now it's the shortstop, Tommy Edmond, and the pitch. Swings and misses out number two. The batter, number nine. And now here is Gavin Lux. He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. Wouldn't chase that time. Well, this guy's definitely a plus runner, but what I love about him is that he goes all out every single time, never takes a break. It's guys like that, even though they don't have the elite speed, the fact that they're consistent with it, they make moves on the base paths. That one ripped right center field. And it's a one-hopper off the wall. Should be extra bases. And into second easily with a two-out double. Well, that was one of those high percentage advantage counts where batting averages are just so much higher. Put a pretty good jolt into that one. Great swing, nice balance, and weight transfer. And he got it to drop in out there in the deep part of the field. A chance now to take the lead. And at this point in the game, that could be a deciding run. Man in scored position with two away. Enrique Hernandez getting ready to hit. At the belt and fires. That misses. And a count to the wall. This one chopped to first. He takes it himself to the bag, and that'll do it. We go to the top of the seventh. Here's the switch hitting left fielder Jerickson Profar. The one one. Late on that fastball. Sometimes a hitter will go up there and guess, and it's not just pulling something out of the sky, but expecting because of tendencies a certain pitch in a certain location. He just guessed wrong. The one two. Ball. Just misses the mark outside the zone. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Right through there, got him. And there's one away. Well, he's going to have some thinking to do when he leaves the ballpark after this one. That was his third strikeout, and this one looking, obviously, so he's been a little overmatched. He's got to find a way just to be more competitive up there at the plate. Base is empty one away late here in game six. Misses the zone, and he gets him to chase. Man, that was pretty close right there. Swinging. Couldn't catch up to the heater. Oh, really expanded the zone right there with that fastball off the outside corner of the play. Got him to chase it. That's a tough one to lay off of because it starts close to you and just continues to run away from you in that batter's box. So it's a really nice pitch with two strikes. Kicks and fires. Nope. That misses. Okay. And that's ball three. And that's ball four. Well, oh, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. Here's Xander Bogarts. Two gone. The possible go-ahead run at first. Swing and a miss. He was late. Strike two. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get in the scoring position. Fights that one away, still one and two. Mm -hmm. 
Swings and misses. Blew the express right by his bat for strike three. We're back in a new pitcher here to start the bottom of the seventh. Jason Adam. Jason Adam. Here comes Chris Taylor. For the Dodgers, the left fielder, Chris Taylor. One and two now. Gets a piece and stays alive. Right hander kicks deals. And another ball. Awfully close. I don't know how you take that. He's seeing the ball out of the pitcher's hand really well right now. And here's a 3 2. Battling here as he fouls it away. It's a leadoff walk, and that's the go-ahead run. It wasn't easy, but he earned that walk after a long at-bat. When you go that deep into an at-bat, the hitter usually comes out on top. And up next for Los Angeles, Andy Pajas. Adam checks the runner. Taylor back in on a dive. With the go-ahead run at first, here at the bottom of the seventh. Swings through that one for strike two. One ball, two strikes. Well, this is a good time to step out of the box, take a deep breath, reset. A couple of change-ups. Probably won't see another one here. And a ball and two strikes. Wouldn't chase that time. That's a really good take. The go-ahead run aboard at first. Nobody out. High fly ball down the left field line. Coming on pro far. He's there. He's got it. Up next to the, the right field. Here's Mookie Betts. He's kind of an outlier, especially when guys are consciously sacrificing contact to deliver power. The 1-1. One -one. Yeah, his swing is so good. It's in the zone a long time. He gets the barrel to it a lot, and that produces more base hits. That's ripped, and this one could be extra bases. Around second on his way to third. Coming home. He will score the Dodgers half the lead. It's two to one. Well, there you go. The RBI machine. Another clutch run scoring at bat. Yeah, he's been so good in these situations. Call it clutch if you want, but his resume speaks for itself. Out of the bullpen for the Padres, Wandy Peralta. And that's a big potential run out there in second as he comes in trying to keep the deficit where it is. For the infielders, they got to be thinking about keeping the ball from getting by them into the outfield any way they can. One out, runner at second. And now the center fielder, Teoscar Hernandez. 
Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. Singy, one of the things that's interesting is that guys really don't worry about swing and miss from an offensive standpoint anymore. So when you see somebody who contacts the ball like this, do you think of that as plus value? Absolutely. If he's doing damage now, if he's rolling over and, and grounding out, then it's a different story. But yeah, if he can put the ball in the gaps or over the fence, 100%. Third time he struck out in this one, and definitely an individual performance you want to flush. He just hasn't looked very comfortable up there. Just one of those days. But when you're still winning the ball game, at least you can focus on doing your part to maintain that lead and getting that W. Here comes Max Muncy. Man on second, two down. Check swing, he went too far, and it's a strike. Yeah, and the domino effect of that is running up pitch counts on pitchers and then either getting them to a place of fatigue or getting into the bullpen perhaps before you get to those higher leverage arms at the back end. Man, it's second. Way inside, gets out of the way. One of the things that Jim Leland used to say when I was broadcasting with the Marlins, the longer a plate appearance goes for a batter, the more likely it is that something good will happen for the hitter. Inside, backs him off again. Two outs. Fouled off again, and it remains three and two. Yeah, and I figured you would get Kotze into this because you had a free dinner at his house the other night. That is true. Strike three. Got him looking on the changeup. But a run will score in the inning on this RBI double. And it's now a 2-1 ball game. Welcome back, and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Alex Vesia. These are the spots relievers really make a name for themselves. Late and close. There's not much margin for error, but at the same time, there's a reason they're put in these situations. Well, one run game. David Peralta at the play. David Peralta. Looking to get the tying run on base. And fouled off. The 2-2 two -two on the way. Stays alive. Well, on paper, it's favorable to have a fairly quick inning here with two of the three hitters he's set to face batting from the left side. Same side he throws from. And another ball. Meanwhile, Activity in the bullpen. Teddy Herzog looks to be getting ready for manager Dave Roberts. So now three and two. That one misses. So a leadoff walk. It's tough after falling behind a hitter, two balls and no strikes, but now at least he gets a fresh start against a new batter, but he needs to get back into the strike zone and start pitching with conviction. Making a move at first. Pinch running here. Brandon Lockridge. The pitch. And fires in a fastball at 95. I love this part of the game. Does he really want to try and steal second against this catcher? I know he's fast, but it's pretty risky. And he deals. Spoils the two strike pitch and he'll see another. And now the lefty. In the air out to center. Hernandez sizing this one up. Squeezes it. Kyle 
Kyle Higashioka now at the plate. And things could change quickly here with one swing. Ball to strike. The pitch. Pro save. That's a stolen base. Fought off foul. Pick off move to second. Lockridge back on a dive. Good wheels out there on second, and he's getting a pretty big lead right now. Definitely looking to score on any hit to the outfield. And another ball. Luis arrives. On deck for the Padres. So the tying run at second. Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. I don't think he really wanted to pitch to him right there anyhow. So the San Diego batting order turns over. And now the first baseman, Luis arrives. Two on, one out. Nope. Lots of anxious fans in the ballpark right now. You can feel it. The pitch. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. One out. The possible tying and go-ahead runs on base. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Wow, just great bite to that slider. Broke hard out of the zone, and he just couldn't hold up the swing. You know, as a hitter, that pitch is really hard to take, and there's just not much you can do with it. You know that, but you don't want to get rung up by the umpire. Pitcher on here, Evan Phillips. Well, the best relievers love the opportunity to come in and protect the tight lead late in the ball game. Some of them are just wired different, so we'll see what he's got here. Fernando Tatis Jr. to hit here. Here comes a pitch. That's in there, and it's a full count. It's a crucial missed opportunity. Well, this guy competes hard. We see the emotion there. I love it. Great job of getting out of the jam. Defensively, Donovan Solano. He entered the game to pinch hit and now man second base. Also into the ball game, Brandon Lockridge. He takes over and right. Now on the bump, Alec Jacob. Just trying to keep this one close here, and this is where a bullpen can give their players a chance to fight back into the game. And up to the plate is Will Smith. The catcher. Will. And the righty deals. Swing and that ball smashed on a line. And they get the out on Smith. And there's one down. Now batting. Now at the plate, Tommy Edmond. Base is empty one away. Here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Pitch in the dirt. Now two balls and a strike. Activity in the bullpen for San Diego. Jeremiah Estrada, the young right-hander, up and throwing. Mm -hmm. 
Next offering is downstairs. Right through there for a strike. That fastball, even though it's up, that's the velocity you want to go after. Low 90s, a lot better than trying to hit the high 90s. In the air, left field. Profar has a beat on it. Makes the grab, two down. The batter, number nine, second baseman, Gavin Lux digs in now. Taken high in the draft, he's had that top prospect label over him since he put on a professional uniform. But at some point, that starts to go away, and you've got to produce at the big league level. Now a jump throw, an acrobatic play to end the inning. Pure athleticism on that one. In the air, legs split a bit, and fires across the diamond. He's going to get a lot of high fives in the dugout. the closer Teddy Herzog and I can't imagine any save is an easy one you're holding a small lead on the scoreboard and you know those hitters are going to give you the best at bats they can so it's always high stress let's see what he's got here to try and close it out sliced hard but foul the one two Swing it in the and a strikeout for the first out here in the ninth. Well, that right there is what you want to see out of your closer. Come in and close the door, cancel any hope that that opponent has in making some type of comeback in the ball game. Tell you what, that helps him settle in, and that helps everybody else relax a little bit to get these other two outs. And it is two and one. And you get to this part of the order. Yeah, there's some pop there, but more likely there's some base hits. So very important to be patient. Let the pitcher walk you, if you will. Misses off the play. Three and two down. Jackson Merrill in the San Diego on deck circle. Trying to close out a one-run lead here at the top of the ninth. Outside, and that is ball four. So a change being made at first base. Coming in as the pinch runner, Tyler Wade. One down, runner at first. Here's the center fielder, Jackson Merrill. Left-hand hitter waits. Runner takes off. Throw to second. Save! Here's a rocket to right field. Makes the grab. Runner tags and will move up to third. Betts quickly gets it back in. And the stop sign goes up at third on the potential tying run. So they're down to their final out. Now Xander Bogarts gets a chance to hit. Two outs. Line drive, base hit. In comes the run from third. We are tied at two. Gets it done to drive in the run and tie it back up. And man, I'll tell you, a line drive like that into the gap just feels so good. It's feedback that you had everything on time and in control from start to finish with your swing. Now a move being made for a pinch hitter, Elias Diaz. He comes to the plate in a huge spot in this one. Bogarts leads off first with two down to the inning. There goes the runner. There's the ball. Throw to second, and he's safe. Pretty close play on that one. A perfect throw probably gets him. That throw is just a little wide to the third base side of the bag, so he had to reach a little bit to get it. Could have been just enough to make